Immaculate Mary, I'm just giving you a uh, missalette. If, if you want to sing with us, page 269 and number, number 290, or look in your hymn book on page 732. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. And we begin uh, this month is the month of the Rosary, and we are going to have the May crowning of the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, we know the Mother in our faith. Uh, she has a very important role in our salvation, and we honor her always in our lives. And we have been invited the whole world by the Pope to join in the rosary of the whole month, especially to pray for the end of the pandemic that we have back the normal life that we used to know before. So we all have to be part of this rosary every day, if you have no much time, at least a decade a day. So now we are inviting uh, the people who are going to crown the statue to come forward as they come with a song. And we begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we begin the fifth week in this joyous season of Easter, our Lord Jesus Christ is reminding us that we have to stay with him always in our lives, to learn from him so that we continue to do his ministry wherever we are. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God. 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea, and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being brought up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. 
I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow down before him. To him alone shall bow down. All who sleep in the earth before him shall bend. All who go down into the dust. And to him my soul shall live. My descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us not love let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we shall believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you 
unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Many times our Lord Jesus Christ identified himself with so many things in terms of creation. Last week we heard him saying, I am the good shepherd. This week we hear him saying, I am the true vine. Jesus always added something to what people were using at that time. There were people who were calling themselves shepherds, but he wants his disciples and us to know that he is a good shepherd. There were so many people who referred themselves like a vine, but he wants us to know that he is the true vine. The true vine, and we are the branches. Jesus Christ is giving us such a wonderful blessing as we begin this fifth week in the joyous season of Easter. He's saying, remain in me as I remain in you. That is a blessing, to be one with Christ. That speaks of a very wonderful union of life that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants always to remain in us and we to remain in him as individual Christians and also as a parish family and the whole church. We have to remain in him. And to remain in him requires something that will sustain that relationship and that will really make it productive. He's saying you have to be pruned. We know when the time comes for those who have wonderful plants in your yard, there's a time that you prune them so that when the time comes, the spring, the, winter, the summer, there's a new life on those plants. And that is what Jesus wants you and I to know about our relationship with him. We have that union of life, but on our side, because Jesus is perfect, he wants on our side to be pruned. And what is that? Each one of us, we have to examine our lives and see if there's something that is preventing Jesus Christ to remain in us and us in him. So that pruning is very important in our lives as Christians. That's why in our Catholic faith, in the Catholic Church, we have the sacrament of confession. It helps us when it comes to pruning. Ask yourself, some of us, when was your last time you were at the sacrament of confession? So you have to examine your life and say, I need pruning. Sometimes we got the sacrament of confession. Sometimes we can do it by the heart of contrition and let go of what can prevent the Lord Jesus Christ to remain in us and us in him. So pruning is a very important part of our relationship with Christ. And that's why St. John is telling us about something that can help us to prune what is not required in our lives as Christians. 
is saying if there's something that condemns my heart or my heart condemns something in me, that thing has to be pruned. All of us, we can go deep in our hearts. We know our lives. You know maybe something that anybody does not know but you. That thing, if it's not part of the Christian way of life, it has to be pruned so that Christ will remain in you and, and you in Christ. So pruning is what the heart condemns. That is what we have to prune. And that is what St. John is reminding us. Because nobody can remain in Christ and Christ in him or her when there's something hanging in our life which we know they are not part of a Christian way of life. So each one of us during this week, let us reflect. How do I allow God to prune something in us? God shows, he shines on us something and to show us this is not part of you. You have to prune it. And that is why St. John is reminding us, God is greater than our hearts. He knows everything. We cannot hide from God. Maybe we can hide from one another because you cannot come into my mind and my heart and I cannot do that to you. But God is greater than our hearts. God knows everything about us. So how do we allow Jesus to remain in us and us in him? We have to know that what I'm hiding, God knows. And he wants me to prune that thing out of my life so that my relationship with Christ becomes sincere and honest. And that's why St. John is saying, children, let our love not be just words and speech. It has to be in deed and truth. And how do we know that we are in truth? Again, is how our hearts is. If our hearts are not condemning us, then we are in union with Christ. If our hearts are condemning us, then we have to prune whatever is being condemned. That's what a Christian must be always. We have to examine our lives. There are things that happen in our lives that we all know. So as Christians, since Christ is inviting us, remain in me and I, as I remain in you. And the relationship of Christ is productive. When we remain in him and him in us, we have to bear much fruit. And the fruits, like we have heard from St. John, is mostly about following the commandments of God, believing in his son, and then he said, and to love one another. Those are wonderful fruits. When you love, everything will follow from that fruit. The goodness, the peace, the unity, and all kinds of goodness in terms of relationship. So that is the way our relationship with Christ must be. It's not an idle relationship. It's that that can produce fruit. And then we have an example in the Acts of the Apostles how pruning is done. We know Saul was a persecutor of the church. But when he was called, he was converted, he was pruned of all that was bad in his life. But again, he found it very difficult to join the disciples because they were afraid of him. They did not trust him. But eventually, they brought him in. They too, they pruned the past and they embraced the new life. That is the way you and I should be. We have to reach out to those people who feel like St. Paul, those people we are afraid of. Let's allow them to be part of the life of Christ. Let's bring them with love that St. John is talking about. Let's bring them in truth so that they too may remain in Christ and Christ in him. That's the production that Christ wants us to be. Let's bear much fruit, not just for our community here, but wherever we are. Let people see and experience 
that special union of life that we have with Christ. When they experience us, they know something is different about us. It's because Christ is in us and we are in Christ. And Christ is reminding us, my dear brothers and sisters, unless we remain in him and us in him, we cannot produce any fruit. Eventually, we are going to become like a dry branch and then fall off from the community and from the relationship with God. So let's bring that tool of pruning so that we can bear much fruit that Christ remains in us and us in him. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With confidence, we present our prayers to God, for we know he responds always to our needs. We pray for the church that we will overcome the difficulties of suspicion and mistrust as seen between St. Paul and the apostles and grow rather in respect and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians all over the world, may our faith be deepened and our hope be strengthened. May our love for others abound with energy and enthusiasm and may we be channels of peace, justice, and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those at home who cannot be present with us in this church today, that they remain in Jesus, and for our safety and health as we continue to open up our churches. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel cut off from God or community, May they discover new connections and relationships that can inspire faith, hospitality, and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who promote the word and love of the Lord in our parish and for good success, and for a good successor to Bishop Robert, that seeds may continue to be sown in our community and the diocese which will bear more fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus, may God console them and grant them peace. And may those who have died celebrate everlasting life. 
in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we bow our heads to present our personal intentions and the intentions of all those who have asked our prayers. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may the Almighty God receive all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, right, and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when in Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together and handing him of your glory as they acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion, O Zion, O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the eye. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right gave you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious make holy these gifts, we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostle and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Everybody sing. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and you graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us safely offer each other a sign of Christ's Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but on say the word, 
my soul shall be healed. Before we come for the Holy Communion, just a reminder in case we have visitors at St. Anthony of Padua, we do not receive Holy Communion by the tongue, we receive Holy Communion in the palms. And please just be in your mask as you come to receive Holy Communion so that we continue to take care of one another with that love of care and safety. The body of Christ. Third song of praise, let's glory to God. Uh, we know that all things through this pandemic and all things they're going through now. 
And we sometimes don't see, we never see a way, but Lord, we make a way. Somehow. In these storms of life. Amen. Like a ship that's tossed and driven At Dubai we see When the storms of life are raging And they fury fall over me wonder what have I done that makes this race so hard to run then I say to my soul take courage the Lord will make a way somehow oh In service, I try to do the little best I can. When I choose to do the right thing, evil present on the hand. I look up and walk. Fortune's pat me by Say to my soul Be patient For God will make a way
wonderful hymn to connect us with uh, our Lord Jesus Christ who's saying, remain in me and I in you. And that's the way we have to glorify God by the way of our lives. Let us pray. Gracious be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements? Investor? Leanne? So these few days are our, the Baldwin family days of celebration. So on Wednesday, my parents, Thomas and Emma Baldwin, celebrated their 54th wedding anniversary. And then on Thursday, my mother celebrated her 74th birthday. And on Tuesday, my father will be celebrating his 75th birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and then, you. Oh, I'll let her announce it. Thank you. It's a wonderful Sunday of celebration. What a gift from God. Thank you. Amen. And we bless all of you who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries. May the Lord bless you with many more health ones to come. Thank you. But also, I end up with a sad note. Um, I think most of you, maybe you may know, Melvin Merritt. Yes, yes he passed last Friday. He died. Uh, that's the brother to Kathleen's marriage, and I, I hear that he was a long-time parishioner here at St. Anthony. Uh, we don't know yet about the funeral arrangements. We'll communicate to you. So pray uh, for his soul and also for the family. 
The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God. Turn to page 7, uh, 724 in the Green Book. 724, our last song. Hail, Holy Queen. Oh. 